What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Studio at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. I feel like you could probably get a crisp view of our background right now and see that it says Star Trek back there, which is very appropriate for my conversation with Casper Kelly, who is working on some new Star Trek digital shorts. Congratulations on those. I can't wait to hear about those, but I also want to hear a lot about your passion for animation and your background. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Perry. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, Yes. Uh, oh, I don't. Need, a passion for animation. I'm not what, sure. What, do you know what sparked it? Like, what was the what was the first moment when you're like, this is a this is a storytelling medium and a craft that I feel like I can make the most of if I go down that path. Um, well, uh, I think uh, Star Trek: The Animated Series was actually one of them. I'm dating myself, but I I was very young when that happened and uh, was obsessed with that cartoon and. Um, uh, I, I told my mom I was changing my first name to Captain, uh, Captain Kelly, because I wanted to be like Captain Kirk. And my mom was like, well, that's, that's a title. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't, it's my first name. I'm surprised <laughs> I haven't heard of people actually doing that now that you say it. <laughs> I kind of love that. This isn't what um, the Star Trek shorts are, but I know you are also heavily involved in adult animation. And I feel like that sector of animation doesn't get nearly enough credit for how like rich and thematically relevant it can be. So do you remember the first thing you saw in that sector that showed you the storytelling possibilities in that realm? Um... You know, there wasn't a lot. I, it was probably, um, as far as adult feeling, it, it might have been either Wizards by Ralph Bakshi or um, Fantastic Planet was a real mind blower. It was just very dark and odd and like a dream, you know. So I, I like that a lot, too. We need more in that <laughs> space. It does feel like it's becoming like more widely embraced than ever, but it just always feels like something like needs that needs to be in the spotlight even more so than it is right now. I, yeah, I think there could be more uh, adult animation for sure. Yeah. Is there any is there anything in that realm you would recommend to our viewers right now? Like whether it's something you worked on, but also something that you've seen recently that will maybe inspire you in the future. Oh, in terms of adult animation? Yeah. Well, definitely, I want you to watch my shorts <laughs> that are coming out. But I would say, uh, well, it's not recent. I'm kind of newer to anime, but I did watch, finally watch Neon Genesis. And I was like, oh, my God. I, yeah, I love that. And I, I always... just heard it influenced Nope, that Nope uh, used a little bit of it, was inspired by that, too. But anyway, I'm, I'm always rambling. always here for anime uh, yeah. suggestions. I need to get into that realm a little more so than I have. All right, leaning into Star Trek now. How exactly does one get involved in this capacity in a new batch of shorts? Is it something you seek out, or is they is it something they come to you to this work one, on? This one, I was well. I did a. I, this isn't my first Star Trek thing. I did a little piece uh, for a Star Trek short. There, there was a Star Trek short which was sort of an origin story about the Tribbles, mm -hmm. and Alex Kurtzman, I think, inspired by uh, Too Many Cooks, which I did, and also the Cheddar Goblin sequence in Mandy. He wanted me to do a commercial for a Tribble cereal. So I, that was the first thing I did for him. And he's wonderful. The whole Star Trek family is wonderful. And then he very kindly, when this anniversary came about, he very kindly uh, thought of me since uh, I do things like that. Like Too Many Cooks has the 80s G.I. Joe sequence in there mm -hmm. and so forth. So he, th he thought I was a good fit. And hopefully I am. Can you tell us a little bit about your role on this particular project and maybe if there's something within that role that is a new creative challenge for you, something you've never done on any of your past projects? Um, well, I'm, uh, sort of, I'm writing them along with these two other writers, Claire Friedman and Aaron Waltke. I write them and then I'm directing them uh, basically along with uh, uh, Awesome Incorporated, the animation mm -hmm. studio. And the challenge is that the, I think the challenge is this isn't something new I'm making myself. It is a beloved uh, thing with a storied history. So it is negotiating when, but you also want to you want to, you want to push limits. So put, what's the right limits to push? What's not right? What feels good? What makes it, this doesn't feel like Star Trek anymore? Yeah. And, ju and just figuring the, all that out. Because it is uh, a show about optimism and hope for the future, but it's also a show that does not take itself too seriously. 
Uh, oh, I have yeah. so many follow-ups about that idea, but more broadly in terms of finding the right stories, because there, there's five of them in total. What is it like picking the right assortment of characters so, you know, they all fit together, but they, they stand on their own two feet as okay. much as you need? I have a true answer to this, which I've learned about myself, is I am not a great judge of my own work. So what I usually do is overwrite. So we wrote 10, and then... I go, Alex and everyone, which are, which are your favorite? Are, and if you don't like any of them, I'll, we'll write more. But they loved them and, and they picked five. So I don't want the pressure of deciding that myself. So I just do a lot and then let someone else decide, and hopefully the audience, which ones, are, which ones they like. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't feel fair to ask when these haven't even come out, but is there a possibility that that other batch can be saved for future releases? Absolutely, and there are some good ones. Yeah, I like, yeah. Uh, I think so, and, and, but, but I will say this, uh, and maybe you're segueing to this anyway, but I'm doing a comic book, yes. and they originally said, well, why don't we use those five scripts in the comic book? And I go, hold on, I've never written a comic book. I want to write a comic book. I want to take advantage of that medium. I don't want to just adapt these animation scripts to a comic book. I'm going to write something new for you. So. Huh. They didn't go into there either, but they'll, they'll, something will happen with okay. them. Okay, you always hold tight to that All stuff. Right. You never know in the future. So with these five shorts and the characters you get to work with, which one were you most excited to get to like write for and play with? And then ultimately thus far, which one has been more creatively fulfilling to work with than you ever could have imagined? Oh, uh, well, uh, we've released three names, uh, uh, Doug Jones, Armin Shimmerman, and uh, Jonathan Frakes. Mm -hmm. And... I loved all of them, and uh, it was very. And uh, but I did grow up with Next Generation, so I was pretty darn starstruck with that. Um, but with uh, with Saru and Cork, it was interesting that uh, because they wear prosthetics, that even though they were just coming in for a voice record, Cork uh, um, had to bring prosthetic teeth, and Saru brought uh, a prosthetic nose to help get, because so Saru can have that nasally sound and how Quark, uh, you need that those teeth to sound like Quark. So that was very interesting. I'm surprised I've never thought about that, but that makes all the sense <laughs> yeah. in the world. Well, and originally they were gonna just put them in full makeup. And I mean, a, a long time ago. And and I think it was uh, Quark who was like, there's gotta, or Saru, there's gotta be a way, better way. Can't you just make me just the nose? And they're like, okay. I have many more layers I want to hit here. Just in, in general, in terms of the stories that you're telling here, like I love the fact that, that Star Trek is, is, is always hopeful, but it also, even though it's futuristic, it has like a timeless quality to it. So what is it like recapturing those feelings that we know and love from Star Trek stories, but while also maybe, you know, leaning into what modern audiences want now as well? Um, yes. It's something to negotiate because... Uh, when I was talking to Alex Kurtzman, I was like, my style is a little more uh, irreverent and, little. And, and sort of can be a little raunchy or a little this or a little that or deconstruct it or destroy it. And and he he was like, don't hold back, just go for it. So I tried some things. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want you to spoil anything, but is there anything you tried and thought to yourself, there's no way they're going to let me do this, but we're going to see it in one of the finished cuts? Uh... Oh yeah, oh yeah. And also, I was nervous that the talent would 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 say, "Wait a minute, you can't have my character doing this." But uh, I think I'm going to do some stuff, and I okay. hope you like it. I hope I'm you eager like to it. see yeah. it. I yeah. want to apply a similar question to the style of animation here, because it's obviously supposed to capture the original animation style. But there are so many new uh, techniques and tools that you have at your disposal. So, what was it like recreating what we know and love, but also being able to implement those new tools to make it better than ever? Um, yes. Well, I'm doing it with awesome. I can't remember if I mentioned that already. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did. Okay. So. Um, We've done stuff like this before, so there's a few tricks I learned, um, and uh, uh, I'm totally blanking. Uh, one of them is, we, uh, is called gate weave. Did we okay. talk about this? No, 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 we didn't. All right, so I would w I'd watch a, a cartoon, and it would be a little bit blurred and a little off register, but it still didn't quite feel old. Mm -hmm. And we learned that uh, old cartoons were on film, the sprockets didn't quite line up with in the film projector, so they would just move around. They'd bounce around just a tiny bit, 
because it's not perfect. So you have to fake that, and, and you, you watch the animated series; it's like that too. So you you have to. That's one thing you have to do. Oh, that's uh, interesting. There's a bunch. There's a million little things like that. I love details like that. It's not just adding like film scratches on a like to make it look like an old movie. You want to do a lot more than that. Just, and, yeah. <laughs> just to tease the the comic now a little bit. Is there is there anything about what it takes to write and develop a comic that kind of like even with all your storytelling experience that like blew your mind? Something that is specific to that storytelling format. Um, in the sense of, uh, you can only have so much, you don't, uh, well, uh, you can only have so much dialogue in a panel because you want to see the art. And so you have to pace it in that way of how much you can do in a page. Uh, because in a, in a TV show, you can have someone do a monologue for three minutes. It's no big deal, but it's a different animal, but it's wonderful. And there's so many things you can do in a comic book that no other medium can touch. So it's a, just a great art form mm -hmm. for freedom. So, yeah. All right. I'm ending right now with two selfish questions because my favorite genre is horror. Oh, wow. Okay. And I love Mandy. Oh, I yes. Think, I think it would be a real shame if the world didn't get more Cheddar Goblin. Uh, from your <laughs> lips to God's ears. I would love that. I, so I will assume then there's been no like actual conversations about <laughs> Mandy too, or maybe even like personal things that you would like to do with that concept and that character in the future. Well, I don't own that character, but there have definitely been conversations. Uh, there have things been bouncing around with, uh, cause I'm friends with Panos, the yeah. director. We've talked. Yeah, there's been conversations. I for love sure. Panos. Anything, yeah, he's any, great. Anything he makes, sign me up for. And I know he's kind of says he said his Mandy sequel idea and that it's not possible and that he's not so interested. But I'm a greedy Mandy fan and I want yes. more. Yes. Yes. And I still have my uh, my Cheddar Goblin box <laughs> that I was sent in the mail when that movie was coming out. And I look at it all the time. I'm like we need more of that in the world. I can't believe I was a part of that. It's amazing to me. Yes. <laughs> it is It is so unique and incredibly special. The other uh, horror like question. Like Star Trek, right here, folks. Exactly. Yeah. The other horror question I wanted to ask you, though, was is there anything on the horizon in terms of feature directing for you post Ulog? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes. But we're not. There's a pause now because okay. of various labor issues. Yes. But yes. Knock on wood, absolutely. We, we like to speak those things into existence yeah. on Collider Let's sets. So, so I bring yes. that up just to have a little positive touch on it. In the meantime, we will get all your wonderful Star Trek work that we will enjoy and yeah. love. Casper, congratulations on everything you've accomplished, and in particular, the Star Trek digital shorts in your comic. Thank you so much, Perry.